Hey what's up guys, it's Ryan and today I have another load order video for you. This one is going to be geared towards becoming a true pirate in Skyrim. Now I recently made another load order video covering a thief and assassin build using 150 mods where I went into full detail on what each and every single mod does. For this video however, we're going to be doing the same, but I'll only cover the mods that have to do with becoming a pirate. This is because I'm using the same graphic, combat, and gameplay mods featured in my previous list, so if you want more info on the mods that I use to enhance those areas of the game, I'll leave a link in the description that'll take you to the video where I fully dive into detail on what all of my current mods are and how they function. The description is also where you'll find the full mod list with the pirate mods marked so you know exactly where to place them in your list. And if you don't want to use Xbox's search tool, you can find all of the links to these mods in my pinned comment down below. With all that important information out of the way, let's go over the mods that'll transform you into a true pirate. Now starting off this huge list, I do want to say that you are going to need the unofficial Skyrim Edition patch for all of these mods to function properly. There's a lot of mods in this list that require the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, so it's best to download it and keep it at the top of your load order, and basically what it does is it fixes a bunch of different glitches in the game because we all know that Bethesda releases some buggy games, so it's best to patch those bugs and actually have the game work the way it was supposed to, and it's just a staple mod in my load order that I'll always have. Next up we have the Paper Style Interface mod as well as the handwritten font add-on for it, and basically what it is is it's a complete new player interface that features a new map and menu as well as markers, new icons, new cursors, and a skills menu as well as a quest journal and main menu, all in the style of a paper journal. The handwritten font add-on that goes along with it just makes it so all of the font fits correctly in the menus and it just looks a lot better as well. After that we have the Skyrim United main menu replacer which changes your main menu to a beautiful picture of solitude and I think it just fits perfectly with this pirate load order because the picture features ships on their way to solitude and I just think it was perfect considering the fact that we're spending most of our time in this list out in the oceans. The next mod in this list is the Oblivion like loading screens mod and it replaces the loading screen interface to look more like the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. It also contains lore friendly loading screens which feature 94 in total in a paper style and it just goes hand in hand with the paper style interface mod. Up next we have the Songs of the Nord mod which is a music overhaul that adds over 40 folk and Celtic songs into the game. This is to add a more immersive and diverse feel to your playthrough and it fits perfectly with our pirate theme. Staying along the same lines as our music overhaul we have the Authentic Medieval Tavern music mod. This is a simple mod that replaces most of the taverns in Skyrim with authentic medieval tunes. And the reason we say most taverns because for sake of variety, they've chosen not to include the Drunken Huntsman since the Bannered Mare is also in Whiterun. This gives each inn a unique feel. Up next we're going to need some pirate armor so why not the Rebellion Pirate Armor 1K version. I'm using the 1K version just so it fits in my load order but if you're not using my entire list you could use the other version. This adds a standalone set of Rebel Pirate Armor that can be crafted at the forge. And all of the gear can be crafted under the leather section within the crafting menu and it can also be tempered at any workbench. It's classed as light armor and it's suitable for males and females of all races. Now we can move on to the next mod which is the Be a Skeleton Ghost Pirate mod. This adds a set of skeleton ghost armor that allows you to customize the armor as well as a few custom spells thrown in for good measure. It also features interchangeable armor pieces unique to both male and female characters, two magical ghost ability rings, two custom bound weapons and spells, and a custom spell that summons three skeleton curvy cutthroats to fight by your side. So if you're interested in becoming a skeleton ghost pirate instead of a regular pirate, simply just head over to Bellathor's general goods stores and upstairs you'll find an urn. You can then loot the urn and that's where the fun begins. Next up we're going to need some weapons if we're a pirate, and what better mod than the pirate dagger mod? This mod adds a new pirate themed dagger into the game and it's craftable in the steel category at any blacksmith forge. It can also be improved at the grindstone with one steel ingot and is also enchantable. Our next weapon mod is called the Trove of Treasures. This mod adds 17 new unique items for you to collect which includes one new shield, two new daggers, six new swords, two new greatswords, three new maces, a new war axe, a new battle axe, as well as a new war hammer. Now it actually doesn't list where the weapons are located so you have to follow the riddles that are in the description of the mod page, which I think was a really cool touch. Now we can move on to our weather mods and I'm using the Mythical Ages Weather Overhaul. This is a complete overhaul of weathers and lighting with a fantasy theme. There's also a large variety of weathers compared to vanilla weathers and a preset system that can be used to change the graphical style. You'll receive a power spell called Options Mythical Ages Preset upon loading into the game and you'll be able to choose which preset you'd like. If you want the preset that I'm using, it's called Sharp. Next we can move on to our NPC overhauls to make ourselves as well as our pirate crew look even better, and that's the Lean Skyrim NPC Overhaul. 
This completely overhauls all of the NPCs in the game, and it's very lightweight as well, coming in at 200 megabytes, so it's way better than all of the other NPC overhauls that take up almost a gigabyte of space. And then after that, we can make ourselves look even better by using the Divine Skins and Body for Men and Women mod. This basically just focuses on the bodies of all the characters in the game and completely retextures them to make them look way more realistic and better. Last but not least in our customization category, we have the Beards mod, which completely overhauls all of the beards in the game, including the vanilla ones with some new high quality textures. This is done to provide the best photorealistic look possible, and the aim is to stay true to the original look of the vanilla textures, but providing a more natural and realistic look. And it's perfect for this list so you can show off your true pirate beard. Next up, we can fill the ocean with some new sea creatures, and first off, we have the Orca Killer Whales, Mahill Monsters and Animals mod, followed by Giant Snakes, the Ichthyosaur, Seals and Sea Lions, Demon Fish, and Giant Cephalopods. These are all Mahill Monsters and Animals mods, and they're just perfect to fill the ocean with some brand new and scary creatures. Now, topping off the new sea creatures section, we have the Sea of Spirits mod, which adds whales, narwhals, and several kinds of sharks, drew, and many others to the sea. Essentially, this is just a sea creatures only version of the Beast of Tamriel mod, and it's perfect for this list. Now we can move on to change how the enemies function in the game, and starting us off we have the Genesis Unleashed 2.1 for Dungeons mod. This mod changes the NPCs that are featured in Dungeons, as well as their locations, to be intelligently chosen to ensure a unique adventure each time you play through a dungeon. It basically just makes it so each enemy that you encounter throughout a dungeon is going to be completely different no matter how many playthroughs you do. Overall, making each new dungeon you go into a whole new experience, even if you've explored it before. Moving on, we have the Improved Bandits Complete Bandit Overhaul, which completely overhauls bandits by modifying their gear, stats, and perks. Bandits will now play by the same rules of the player, and their attributes and perks have been completely rebalanced, so that the strength of bandits now increases more consistently across levels, and low-level bandits will now pose an adequate challenge. Now we can move on to the Pirates Wield Cutlasses mod, which adds a new cutlass into the game with unique models and textures, and it's added to each pirate that is found throughout the game, so they'll be using it instead of the Hammerfell weapons. Now we can move on to adding some new locations into the game, and starting us off is the Great City of Solitude mod. The Great City of Solitude transforms Solitude's port into something truly worthy of Skyrim's capital city. The port has been greatly expanded with new homes, shops, and warehouses, and now covers both sides of the Karth River. The Stone Arch has also been reshaped to something more natural, and there's also been new vendors, guards, and NPCs that have been added into the game as well. And moving on, we have a mod by the same author, which is the Great Cities mod, which focuses on all the other cities in the game, such as Dawnstar, Dragonbridge, Morthol, and Winterhold. This completely overhauls all of those cities and make them completely remastered, so that traveling to each city in the game, whether they have a dock or not, is going to be a brand new experience and it's going to look great as well. All of these cities also include new merchants, so that you can sell all of your precious treasure that you find throughout your travels to them. Now we just gotta find out where the treasure's located, and that's where the map seller SE mod comes into play. This is a relatively simple mod that adds a cartography shop to Skyrim on the outskirts of Whiterun, and here you can purchase maps of all the different holds in Skyrim. Once read, these maps will reveal all of the locations that hold within the map, though they can't be fast traveled to. Moving on, we have the Forgotten Dungeons mod, which adds 50 new Radiant Quest-enabled dungeons into the game, as well as Easier Riders Dungeon Pack, which adds even more dungeons dungeons into the game for you to explore and find new treasures in. Overall, with these mods combined, there's 73 new dungeons to explore and tons of new treasure to find. Following that, we have the Watchtowers Reborn mod, which adds 27 new watchtowers along the Sea of Ghosts that are organized by bandits. And with the Civil War going on, soldiers can't be spared to reclaim them, and it's up to you to make the difference. Each of these 27 towers will be populated by the Genesis bandits, meaning each time you approach a tower, it's going to be completely different, so it's best to be stocked before you head into battle. Now we can move on to adding some new treasures into the game, and first we have the Aztec Pirate Gold mod. This simply just changes the gold in Septim in Skyrim to be the Aztec Gold from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I felt this was a perfect addition to the load order, and it just fits the theme really well. And moving on, we have the expanded Gemstones mod, Vanilla Gems Retextured, which changes all the vanilla gems into the game to have a new remastered look. And we can follow that up with the expanded Gemstones plus 200 gems, which adds 200 extra gemstones in the game and implements them into mining, trade and loot tables, and many other areas of the game. With 200 new gems added into the game, there's so much more treasure to find and way more things to loot. Next up, we have the Underwater Treasure mod, which adds 15 sunken treasure chests plus an underwater Dwemer ruin along the coast of the Sea of Ghosts, as well as 36 treasure chests to assorted rivers and lakes around Skyrim for new adventurers to find. 
Moving on, we have the Skyrim Scavenger Hunt mod, which starting in Riverwood, you can find a note pinned to a door that'll lead you on a huge adventure to find tons of new treasures. And following that, we have the Treasure Hunt mod, which has 21 more treasure chests around Tamriel for you to find and loot. And speaking of loot, we have the Narrative Loot mod up next, which features 1,629 new miscellaneous items to chests, pockets, and vendors. You'll find new paintings, new decorative books, and new types of dinnerware, as well as new small furnishings. Overall, this mod adds more depth to loot, with an emphasis towards deepening the lore of the game and environmental storytelling. Next, we can change up the world map of the game, and what better world map to use than the quality world map paper mod? This basically changes the entire world map of the game to be a paper version, and it truly just fits the theme of being a pirate and following maps perfectly. Up next, we have Mr. B's Lootable Things mod, which replaces static items into lootable ones physically and doesn't use scripts. This includes static barrels, crates, wood barrels, and taproot balls, and you can find mead and mead barrels as well. These barrels and crates will not only have the usual food or alchemy ingredients, but you can also find weapon, armor, treasure, clothes, books, and assortment of magical items in them as well. Now we can move on to our follower mods, and for this playthrough I decided to go with JWD's Belit the Pirate Queen mod. Belit is an inspired character from the Conan Barbarian comics, and she's a complete standalone follower that uses her own textures as well as a new unique pirate weapon. Next up we have the Realistic Boat Travel mod, which adds several boats to rivers and one on the coast that could be used as a fast travel system. They're similar to carriages in how they work, simply you just activate the boat and choose your destination. These boats must be purchased or repaired before they can be used, and there's only one boat per route, meaning if you take the boat from Riverwood to the Guardian Stones, the boat will stay at the Guardian Stones until you use it again. And staying along the same lines as boats, we have the LVX Magic's Boats mod. This is a truly amazing mod that allows you to build your own boats and use them in the lakes in the Sea of Ghosts, and they come with tons of customization options and have their own cargo holds as well, meaning you can make yourself a pirate ship, a boat with a huge sail on it, or just any type of boat that you would possibly want, and even sail it throughout Skyrim's oceans. Now it's time to remaster Skyrim's oceans, and what better mod than the Depths of Skyrim mod. The Depths of Skyrim mod aims to overhaul the flora, fauna, and visuals underwater. Because Skyrim's underwater environments are more monotone and empty, but this changes that and adds a whole bunch of new items to the underwater areas. This includes new grass types, such as coral and giant kelp. It adds thousands of new fish all throughout the sea, and several dozen unmarked treasures and points of interest for you to find. Now that we've remastered the ground floor of the ocean, it's best to change the water itself, with the Realistic Water 2 mod. This is a complete overhaul to how the water actually looks in the game, and it's completely new and remastered. And following that, we have the Better Water 4 Realistic Water 2, which is a mod for a mod for Realistic Water 2 that makes it look even better. It also fixes a lot of seams that were featured in the original Realistic Water 2 mod, so it's just better to have these two together. Now you may be wondering how you're going to find all these treasures, because whenever you go underwater, everything's just completely blurry. But with the IA-92's Epic Enhanced Water, which is the next mod in our list, it's a water transparency mod that allows you to see right through the water whenever you're underneath it. This will give you the perfect vision that you need to find all of those underwater treasures. Up next we have the alternate start Live Another Life mod, which simply just allows you to skip the entire intro of Skyrim and not have to go to Helgen. It basically just allows you to have your own backstory instead of just being someone who got caught crossing the border. For my playthrough for this list, I decided to go with a shipwrecked off the coast start, and I spawned in an upside down ship that was sinking. And then I escaped to the surface and made it all the way to Solitude, and that's where I began my character. Now of course you can use any different type of start that you want instead of that one, but I felt that that one was the most fitting for this list. Now after that we have the Better Intimidation mod, which replaces all the intimidation choices in the game with more mean and deserved ones. And staying on the same line as changed in the dialogue in the game, up next we have the Immersive Speechcraft mod, which allows you to have NPCs follow you, you can barter and trade with NPCs, you can now command NPCs to do whatever you'd like, you can gift them, beg them, trick them, and fight them, and this is every different NPC in the game. You know all the other NPCs that you would try to talk to and they would just say need something? Now that won't happen anymore. You can now talk to any NPC in the game and have them do anything Thing that you would like. All of these options for the NPCs are based on your speech skill, giving the speech skill actual use now. And topping off this pirate list with one final mod, we have the Underwhelming Multiple Follower mod and the patch for the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch for it. This basically just allows you to have three followers instead of one, giving you the ability to create your own pirate crew. And with all of these mods combined, you'll finally be able to become a true pirate in Skyrim. The final step after installing all of these mods is to restart your Xbox and then start a new game. Once you do that, you're free to set sail and begin your new adventure. I had a blast creating and testing this load order, so if you want to see more gameplay of this list, then you can check the description where I'll leave a link 
link to my pirate playthrough. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new, it really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for future load order videos or mods you'd like me to cover in my top 5 mod series, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter, I'd be sure to leave my Twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it, hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys later.